The Islanders played well in spurts, but were inconsistent and fell to the Washington Capitals 4-3 to three in a shootout. We have our key takeaways, plus our weekly farm report as we discuss all things Bridgeport Islanders and a four-time Stanley Cup champion is our Islanders' birthday of the day. All of that and more coming up on this episode of the Locked On Islanders podcast. Your Locked On Islanders, your daily podcast on the New York Islanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, everybody, welcome to the Wednesday edition of the Locked On Islanders podcast. Hope everybody is doing well, and thank you for making Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. We have got a lot to discuss on today's show, but first, if there's something Islanders related on your mind, if you have a question, a comment, a topic you'd like us to discuss on the show Feel free to send us an email. The email address is LockedOnIslanders at gmail.com. And if you leave your first name and where you're from, we're happy to mention you on the show when we discuss whatever it is that's on your mind. You could also follow the show on Twitter at LockedOnIsles. And you could follow me, Gil Martin, on Twitter at IceWars, N-Y-R-V-S-N-Y-I. We'll keep you up to date on all the latest Islanders news, notes, and happenings. And I am live tweeting during nearly every Islanders home and road game. I'll give you instant insight and analysis, and it's always great to interact with fans during the game and really any time. Islanders fall to the Capitals in a shootout, 4-3, to three, a back-and-forth affair. And, and quite honestly, at times, the Islanders... At times, they have downs. And I, I guess when you're playing a quality team like the Capitals and you play in Kentucky, the result is going to be shootout loss or, or an overtime game or something like that. And we all know that the Islanders struggle in overtime and in shootouts because they generally do not have as many dangerous skill players as a lot of the teams that they are facing. There were definitely some positive things to take away. For large stretches of this game, I would say the second period and parts of the third and the last part of the first, the Islanders did a pretty good job of limit capitals had to work with when they got the puck. The problem was didn't do that well. The breakdowns for They break down spectacular. Simeon Vamov played well, but again, let in that one off goal. In this case, the first goal of the game that put the under nothing. You let in that goal, and it, it took the Ilaria to sort of bounce back from giving up that goal. And, and again, you don't give up that soft goal, and maybe the Islanders win in regulation. We saw you know, a couple of occasions where defensemen pinched uh, the Pelicock duo. Uh, they were both minus two in this game. They pinched. Anders Lee went back and, and tried to defend on a two-on-one work. And as a result, you know, they give up a goal in the third period that cancels out the two-to-one lead. So, there were these breakdowns and times when things just, you know, the Islanders didn't play the solid defensive hockey that is their trademark, and it ended up costing them. But then we get to the positives. Brock Nelson, Kyrie, Anders Lee. Those are your goals. Uh, those three players all hot lately, and they can two assists in, in this game. For Josh Bailey, it was beautiful pass that set up the Kyle. Palmieri goal and made so, you know, there were some 
especially offensively for the Islanders. But uh, again, not shots do you think Lars all had in this game? None. None for Zach Parise. None for Gigi Pajot. Uh, you know, those are three guys that you need, need some more offense from. Now, Boeing, and he, he was effective at times, but you got to have more from a player, more offensive production from Barzal. And, you know, guys like that have got to put the puck on the net. And it's one thing for the fourth line players to not get a shot on goal in a game, but it's another thing entirely when end up with shots on that is something that you can't have and again defensively a disappointing game for Pulak and Pelic they just they seem to fall too often at times and get you know the night game and then the ranger game in my mind, if the Islander to even make anything resembling a playoff run, they had to win both of those games in regulation. They didn't do it. And realistically, you're now 18 points out of a playoff berth with six weeks left in the season. Even though the Islanders have more games left on their schedule than any other team, you are not going to easily make up three points a week for six weeks to get into the playoffs. So to me, you know, this game, there were some highlights. There were some good moments in this. They weren't consistent enough. And again, you're this far behind in the standing. Matt Martin back in the lineup. Josh Johnston taking a seat. Kiefer Bell also, again, uh, you know, what was it, two weeks ago that Barrett Trotz had to get to his head, but he has now been sitting on the bench. I think that all changes as we get closer to the trade deadline because uh, some of the players on the core of this team will not be with the team after today's trade deadline. I, I'm pretty confident of that. We've got a lot more to discuss on, on this episode of the Locked On Islanders podcast. Again, for the Bridgeport Islanders, we'll talk about what they accomplished, where they stand in their hunt for the playoffs, plus a four-time Islanders Stanley Cup winner is our Islanders birthday of the day. All that and more still to come on this episode of the Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by your friends at Built Bar. Have you tried the Built Bar Puffs? If you haven't, you're missing out on one of Built Bar's best tasting bars. Puffs are the first ever protein infused marshmallow. They're fluffy. They're not just a protein bar, they're a treat. And like all Built Bars, they are covered in 100% real chocolate. Puffs are a fan favorite, and it's easy to tell why. Just listen to some of these flavors I mean, yummy, cinnamony churro. Coconut marshmallow, my personal favorite, banana cream pie. So good. These are going to be your new favorite. And like all built bars, they're low calorie, high protein, high fiber, low sugar. Each built bar contains roughly 130 calories, four grams of sugar, and four net carbs, but they pack 17 grams of protein. Most candy bars have 240 calories, 30 grams of sugar and dozens of net carbs. At Built Bar, they're all about the taste. They make it taste delicious first, then they figure out how to make it healthy, and I don't know how, but they pull it off every time. Go to Built.com, use the promo code LOCK15, you'll get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com. On Monday, March 21st at 3.30 Eastern Time, Tune in to Locked On Fantasy Hockey's live deadline reaction show to get all the on-ice fantasy and betting analysis you need from hosts Steel Roden and Flip Livingstone with appearances from our roster of local team experts. Plus, 
catch our own live show at 3 o'clock Eastern time on Monday for our immediate reaction to the Islanders' moves. Time now for our weekly farm report as we discuss all things Bridgers and the Islanders had an interesting weekend. Three games on back-to-back-to-back days. First, a home game last Friday against the Hershey Bears. The Islanders fall in that one by a score of 2-1. to one. Jeff Kubiak got the only goal for the Islanders. Corey Schneider was the netminder. He had 21 saves, but it was a one-goal loss. And for the season, Bridgeport won 2-2 two and two against Hershey. All the goals scored in the first period, but uh, the Islanders just couldn't quite get uh, that game tying goal in the last two periods, they end up falling two to one. But after that, the weekend got a whole lot up with a set or win over the Providence Bruins in Providence. Austin Zarnick, who the Islanders reacquired on waivers, two goals and an assist. And seven goals, the biggest output for Bridgeport since February 17th, 2019. Andy Andreoff, Simon Holmstrom, and Cole Bardro each had two assists, 21 saves for Jakob Skarek, as he now has three appearances in goal on the year. And the win, by the way, ended the Bruins' six-game home winning streak. So a strong performance on Saturday for the Islanders to even their record for again. And then Sunday, the Islanders over the Bruins and and Cole Bardro getting a pair. It's good to see Colbardro do well and a shutout for Corey Schneider in this one. So road wins for the Islanders. Chris Terry, by the way, had the other goal. Jeff Kubiak, two assists as the Islanders continue to battle with the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins for the last playoff spot in the division. So two out of three over the weekend a productive weekend. Chris Terry still leading Bridgeport with 20 goals and 44 points. Koivala, 36 points. He has 26 assists. That leads the team there. Andy Andreoff, 35 points. Arno Durando, 31. And Cole Bardro now with 21 points in just 37 games. Um, Parker Wotherspoon right now leads all defensemen with 16 points. Grant Hutton, one behind with 15. All of Wotherspoon's by three goals, 13 assists. Grant Hutton with six goals from the blue line uh, and nine assists. So the Islanders getting some more consistent play, and the goaltending has been better. Corey Schneider with the shutout and the uh, strong performance on both of his games this weekend, now lowering his goals against average to 2.85. He's now 8, 10, and 2 on the year and has a 9.15 save percentage. Jakob Skarek, 2.98 goals against a 9.04 save percentage, but he is 14, 11, and 4 on the season. There is a busy week ahead uh, for the Bridgeport Islanders. They have a road game tonight. Uh, at 7.05 in Springfield against the Springfield Thunderbirds. And then Saturday, they will return home to face the Syracuse Crunch. That is a 7.05 game. So two games this week for Bridgeport. And then next Wednesday, uh, they have a road game at the Utica Comet. So the schedule remains as Bridgeport continues to fight for that last playoff spot that they really hope to be able to get. It's going to be a fight to the finish. And if you want to check out, again, some of the Islanders' 
future prospects, some of the players of tomorrow, today, head on over to Bridgeport and check out a Bridgeport Islanders game. We've got more to talk about on today's episode. We have our Islanders birthday of the day, uh, a famous Islander who won four Stanley Cups with the team. We'll also have a few more thoughts about the trade deadline, which is coming up, all that and more still to come on the Locked On Islanders podcast. Time now for our Islanders birthday of the day. Today is the 62nd birthday for former Islanders forward Dwayne Sutter. Like all the Sutter brothers, a native of Viking, Alberta, Dwayne was drafted by the Isles in the first round of the 1979 NHL entry draft. Made his debut with the Isles in 79-80 with a 15-goal, 24-point season, but played in 21 playoff games in that first Stanley Cup run for the Islanders. Had three goals and 10 points. Stayed with the Islanders through the 86-87 season. Last year, a 20-goal, 53-point year in 1985-86. Then finished his NHL career with three seasons with the Blackhawks. Dwayne Sutter, never afraid to get physical, to check, to mix things up. Had five seasons of 100 or more penalty, 94 penalty minutes for his NHL career. Dwayne Sutter, 139 goals, 342 points, and 1,333 penalty minutes in 731 regular season games, add 161 playoff games, 26 goals, 58 points, 405 penalty minutes. In 82-83, he was on fire in the playoffs, nine goals, 21 points in 20 games. And look at one of those games uh, in the playoffs, the Stanley Cup Finals, game two, at the North Coliseum in Edmonton, Islanders and Oilers. And boy, you look back at this one, Islanders up in the series one to nothing. How many Hall of Famers played in this game? Andy Moog is the goalie for Edmonton. Billy Smith, the goalie for the Islanders. For the Islanders, your Hall of Famers, Billy Smith, Mike Bossy, Clark Gillies, uh, Dennis Potvan, Brian Trottier, all in the Hall of Fame. Meanwhile, for the Oilers, Paul Coffey, Glenn Anderson, Wayne Gretzky, uh, Yari Curry, Mark Messier, so many great players in this game. And there were a number of other players who were in this contest for these two teams who aren't Hall of Famers, but, you know, great hockey names like Butch Goring, uh, Ken Linzeman. I mean, just so many great players on both of these teams. That's why they were in the Stanley Cup final. The Oilers scored first in this one. Dave Semenko, his first of the playoffs from Tom Rolston and Charlie Huddy at 839. Isles down one nothing, but they answer back. Tomas Janssen, his second. From our Islanders' birthday of the day, Dwayne Sutter and Brent Sutter at 1421. That tied it at one. Then Bobby Nystrom, his seventh from Brian Trottier at 1755. Made it two to one Islanders. And in the final minute of the opening period, Mike Bossy, his 16th from Dennis Potvin, Islanders three, Oilers one after one. Edmonton didn't quit, 5.07 into the second. Yari Curry, his sixth from Glenn Anderson and Wayne Gretzky at 5.07, three to two. But the Islanders respond. Bob Bourne, his seventh from Dwayne Sutter at 8.03. Islanders up four to two. And then Brent Sutter, his eighth from Ken Morrow. And Dwayne Sutter, after two periods, the Islanders held a 5-2 to two lead. Glenn Anderson cut it to 5-3, to three, his 10th from Lee Fogelin and Wayne Gretzky. But Brent Sutter, his 9th from Dwayne Sutter, our Islanders' birthday of the day, and Thomas Janssen at 14-11. That closes out the scoring. Islanders win this one 6-3 to three to win both games in Edmonton and take a 2 to nothing lead in the series for Dwayne Sutter in this game. Sutter with four assists 
in this one is Brother Brent, two goals and one assist. Dwayne was a plus three and a four assist game in a Stanley Cup final. Billy Smith, 30 saves to earn the win. The Islanders would go on to sweep the series in four games, winning the Cup at the Coliseum for their fourth and final Stanley Cup championship. So Dwayne Sutter is our Islanders' birthday of the day. He, 62 years old old today and we wish him all, all the best and many many happy healthy more i think there, there is no doubt now a deadline that the islanders are going to be sellers i think they'll be sellers with a small s i don't think they're looking to deal away major parts of the puzzle here but cal clutterbuck zidane ochara zach parise Maybe Simeon Varlamov, uh, maybe Scotty Mayfield, but those last two, only if the price is really, really right. Uh, we could see some of them move the trade deadline. And the one thing about Lou Lamorello, he never makes a deal unless he feels he gains something from it and that he feels like, you know, it's time to make that deal. Right now, I think is the time. Isn't going to make the puffs this year. And they need to find, you know, who they're going to keep and build around and who they're going to move on from to rebuild and tweak and make things better for next season. We will be back on tomorrow's show. We will have more on the trade deadline, plus a full preview of Thursday's game against the Rangers. Always great when those two teams get together. Thanks again for making Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Now make your second listen, Locked On Fantasy Hockey. Host Steel Roden and Flip Livingstone help you become the expert of your fantasy league. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts. And with the Fantasy League playoffs coming up, this is the perfect time to check out that podcast. That does it for us on today's show. Have a great day, everybody. Stay safe. And of course, let go Islanders.